In this example, we're going to use the round scan to determine if the given set of functions is linearly dependent or independent. To start, we're going to set up a matrix for which we'll have to find the determinant. So that matrix is going to be set up this way. The first row of the matrix will consist of the functions sine of x, cosine of x, e to the power x. The second row will be the first derivatives of those functions. So derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then derivative of e to the power x is, is the same thing. And now the third row will be the second derivative. So functions, first derivatives, and now second derivatives. So that means that we need to find derivatives of derivatives. Derivative of cosine is neg negative sine. Deri derivative of negative sine is, well, derivative of sine is cosine, but I just have to rewrite that negative, so I'll get negative cosine of x here. And then, again, derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x. That is the matrix. Now, for this matrix, we'll need to find the determinant. And that determinant, determinant is what we call the Ronskin. So W. In this case, we ended up with three by three matrix because we had three functions, right? Um, let me remind you how we find the determinant of three by three matrix. Well, actually there are different methods. Um, I'll just show one of them. In that method, you have to choose any row or column. Well, it's common to go with the first column or the first row. Um, I think I'll go with the first column. Now to calculate the determinant, in this first column, you're gonna choose the first element, sine, sine of x. And that sign or that element has to be multiplied by the determinant of the smaller matrix. What kind of matrix? Well, if I, since I'm here on this first element, I'm gonna cross out in my mind the first row and the first column, and the remaining elements will form that smaller matrix. So that will be multiplied by the determinant of the matrix negative sine x, negative cosine x, e to the power x, e to the power x. Next, I'm gonna move to the next element. Um, again, I, I, what did I pick? I picked the first column, right? Okay, so then I'm moving to the next element in that column. Now, as I go over the first column and the elements here, I will be alternating signs. So now I will be subtracting the following product. Product of cosine of x by the determinant of the following matrix. So I'm working with cosine of x here, so I'm gonna, in my mind, cross out the second row and the first column, and the remaining elements, so I have those two and those two, will form smaller matrix. e to the x, e to the x. So I will need to multiply that cosine by the determinant of this matrix. And then finally, I'm moving here to the third element. I'm alternating signs. Here I used positive sign. Here I used negative sign. At the end, I will have to use positive sign. It means that the sign of this element will be preserved, right? So it's it's going to end up being minus. I'll make notes here that I am alternating signs. Sign of x multiplied by the determinant of the following matrix. I am crossing out the last row, row three and column one, and the remaining elements will form that matrix. Cosine x, negative sine x, e to the power x, e to the power x. Like that. Now, now I'm gonna back to the beginning of this expression and I will produce the determinants of those smaller matrices. So now those two matrices are two by two, right? And the determinant of two by two matrix is simply the product of the elements in the main diagonal 
So while we start with this diagonal, we have to multiply elements in that diagonal. So it's negative sine x e to the power x and subtract. This is always going to be a subtraction. Always. Subtract the product of the elements in the other diagonal. Minus negative cosine x times e to the power x. Like that. And I will continue with this matter. So minus cosine of x times the product of the elements in the main diagonal. Cosine x times e to the power x minus negative cosine x e to the power x and then minus sine of x maybe also underline so main diagonal main diagonal the other diagonal okay so the last product is cosine x times e to the power x minus negative sine x times e to the power x. Okay, let's simplify this all. Since I end up with double signs here, I will, to be, to be safe, I will <clears throat> first simplify everything inside the parentheses. So that's sine of x times negative sine x times e to the power x plus cosine x times e to the power x minus cosine of x and then times cosine x times e to the power x plus cosine x times e to the power x and minus sine x times cosine times e to the power plus sine times e to the power. Okay, now I'm ready to distribute. I'm distributing. And this is the result. So negative sine squared of x times e to the power x. That's this product. And then plus sine x cosine x times e to the power x. Next, minus cosine squared x times e to the power x. And then minus, I didn't even notice that I had same terms here. I could have just combined them. Okay, that's fine. I'll do it later. Cosine squared x times e to the power x. Right, so it's the second product. And then finally, here we have minus sine x cosine x e to the power x minus sine that product sine squared x times e to the power x. Now let's see what we got. What we have here, um, we have some opposites, right? So sine x cosine x times e to the power x and that with the opposite sign will cancel. Uh, we also have some like terms to combine. So those two terms can be combined, the ones involving sine squared and e to the power x. So it's negative 2 sine squared times e to the power x. And yeah, and those two that I didn't notice, um, I'll combine them now. Minus 2 cosine squared x times e to the power x. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Let's see if we can simplify a little bit further. I think we can because I noticed that those terms um, have common factors, right? They both have 2 as a factor and e to the power x, and they're both negative. So let's factor out negative 2 times e to the power x. Then we'll have left, oh, I'm missing x here, x, sine squared of x. And now it's going to be a plus, right? Since I'm factoring out negative 2, it's going to become plus 
cos sine squared of x. Okay, now hopefully you can recognize, the, recognize this identity from trigonometry. So sine squared of x plus cos sine squared of x, that equals 1. Right? So that means that I only have negative 2 e to the power x. So that's what I ended up with. Now, let me remind you what we're doing here. Going back real quick. Um, we're trying to determine if this set of functions is linear dependent or independent. And for that, we found the run scan. So the result negative 2 times e to the power x, that's the run scan. How do we use it to determine the dependency or independency? Well, it goes like this. If the run scan equals 0, then the functions are linearly dependent. And then if the run scan not equals 0, then the functions are linearly independent. So what can we say about the result? Well, it's a function, right? But let's try to analyze this function. Um, can it ever be equal 0? Well, x can take, different, can take different values, right? But no matter what value it takes, positive or negative or 0 itself, I can notice that e to whatever power it is, is never going to turn into 0, right? If x is negative, it's going to be negative power. If x is positive, it's going to be a positive power of e. If x is 0, then e to the power 0 turns into 1. So I will never get 0 in this case. It means that for all x values, this will always be non-zero. Okay, so it's not equal 0 for all x values. And that means that our set of functions, our three functions, are linearly independent. And they're independent for all x values. So I can write my answer this way. Linearly independent for all x values. So I'll say on this interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Independent. Okay, and that's how you use the run scan to determine independency in this case.